How many of you, show of hands, when you deal with people, don't see their color or the cultural aspects of them? You just see people when you deal with them, show of hands. How many of you know someone, work with someone who in fact does see color, does see culture? Show of hands. For those that don't have your hands up, go ahead and raise them because you just don't know it, but there are people who see color and culture, who work with you, whether you like it or not. It is human nature. That's what happens. So everything you say and do, they may see from their own paradigm. They see from their own lens. Actually happened, I'm on an airplane. I'm flying somewhere, I think to DC, from Huntsville. And the gentleman I'm sitting next to is melanin challenged. All right, fine, white guy. And uh, he finds out what I do, I find out what he does, and, uh, and he tells me, he says, yeah, 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 I got a question for you. It's kind of belligerent, I'm here to tell you, it was a belligerent conversation, one side of his question for you. I stay calm though, because I didn't want an air marshal taking me out of the plane. <laughs> Why do you people seem to think it's okay, he's talking about black people, it's okay to have your own magazines, but if white people had their own magazines, you'd be upset. I stayed cool, calm, and collected. I said, well, what do you mean? He says, well, you have a magazine called Ebony. How would you like it if we had one called Ivory? <laughs> All right, what's well, a good point? Then he says, OK. I said, I got you. He says, you have a magazine called Black Enterprise. How would you like it if we had one called White Enterprise? Hmm? What do you think about that? So I responded, I says, why do you think? Black people think it's okay. Why do you think we have our own magazine? He says, well, one, I think you're just trying to make money off each other. That's what he said. I stay calm. I'm like, wow, that's a pretty good point. I mean, when you think about it, America's built on what? Capitalism? Making a buck? Finding a market? And working through that? That's not too bad. I can hear that. I can understand that. Niche market. Okay. I said, what's the other reason? You, you know, you people just didn't get over slavery. You just want to kind of keep putting it in a white man's face. You just want to keep showing us you're going to rebel, do whatever you want to do. Throw it in our face, flaunt it. I said, well, here's the answer. Here's why black people think it's okay and it's not okay for white people. He says, okay. I said, oh, man, you know, I'm sorry. I got, I got to ask you another question. He says, go ahead. I said, well, uh, have you ever been in a situation where you were like the minority? He says, what do you mean? I said, have you ever been, you know, like uh, maybe you were Jewish and you grew up in a Catholic neighborhood? No. Uh, well, maybe you were the only guy at a baby shower. Yeah, that's happened. I said, okay, so you know what it's like to be a minority. As a matter of fact, for today's conversation, you're an honorary black man. Oh, he, he, you should have saw him. Once I told him that, he's like, he changed. <laughs> Stereotypically, I don't know what TV show he was watching, but he changed. He's like, yeah. And so I, all right, we did the fist bump, and, he, and the whole time, the rest of the time, he's like, yeah, yeah. Black man, I say, yeah, you're, you're a black man. I said, you know what it's like. You were at the baby shower with all those women. You know what it's like to be a minority. And he, I said, so tell me, how did you feel during that situation? He says, what do you mean? I said, how'd you feel? He says, well, I, I said, did you feel left out? He said, you know, as a matter of fact, I felt left out. I said, now here's the key question. Did the women purposely leave you out? Well, well, no, they're good people. But you felt left, the result was you felt left out nonetheless. Well, yeah, you felt left out. What are you going to do about it? Well, it happened before. Well, we, it's happening now. What are you going to do about it? Well, I'm going to tell them. Tell them what? You're leaving me out. I said, so what happens? They said, well, OK, uh, they're going to change. They're going to include me. I said, you're going to be included? So <laughs> I feel I, they left me out. You tell them, they're going to start including me. I said, after a while, you think they're going to leave you out again? Yeah. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to tell them. They're going to include you? Yeah. I said, OK, we did this two more times. So I asked them again. So what you gonna do about it? He now freaks out on me, and next thing you know, he finally, after all the frustration, says, you know what, I'm gonna do my own thing. I keep telling them, they include me, then they forget me, then they include me, then they forget me, you know what, I'm just gonna do my own thing. I didn't say anything else, I just looked at him and went, oh. And then he looks at me, and you see it dawning on him, and he goes, you know, I, I, I just answered my own question, didn't I? I said, you sure did. Through the history of America, you sure did. See, that's what I'm talking about, where we talk to each other, where we try to internalize.